Welcome all football fans to the show that brings you all things football. The big three is here. The extreme team, Kobena, Nene and Bonga. It's Football Extreme. Welcome gentlemen, we're back together. The band is whole. Bonga, Nene, welcome guys. How are you guys doing? Bonga? Ah, reunited. It feels so good. Yeah. It's been a while, gents. I uh, can't remember the last time we three done a video together on Football Extreme, yeah. but feels yeah. good. There's a lot happening now towards the end of the season, so it's about time. It's about time, yeah. Definitely. Nene, welcome back. The band is together again. How you doing, man? Yes, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Can't complain. As DJ said, it's been a while. It's been a while. So yeah, yeah. Let's 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 see what the end of the season has in store for us. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. speaking about the end of the season, we can't start the show off without talking about two things. Actually, three things. Just to re- just to just <laughs> give, give you a taste. First of all, ha! Liverpool kicking. Some man United tail, DJ. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. <laughs> We've got you guys to change your coach <laughs> or, or speed up your announcements of your new coach. So come, Eric Ten Hag, come join the long line of Man United coaches that get sacked and hired in in the merry-go-round. So Liverpool four, Man United nil, and then Arsenal. Also doing their own four goals against Chelsea. Well done, Nene. Arsenal's performance was... Yeah, it was spot on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, it was... It was a... It was a bounce that we need after the... Uh, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> and we we have lost one in a row. So I mean, honestly, I didn't see it coming. Um, like when I saw the team, um, the formation three at the back, I honestly didn't think that we were gonna win the game. Um, but when we scored first, I was like, okay, cool. You know, there's there's hope. We might get something out of the game. But every time we scored, Chelsea equalised. We scored, Chelsea equalised. And I thought it was going to kill our spirit. Um, but the second half was just something else. So, yeah, I'm happy about that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy for you guys, man. It boosts your top four hopes. Uh, catching up to Spurs there. But DJ, uh, your team hiring a new coach, Eric Ten Hag. A uh, newly minted head coach for next season, though not for now. Uh, Ranjik is still going to be in charge. But what's your feelings? What's your thoughts on your new permanent head coach for next season at Man United? Uh, I don't know whether I should be happy or I should be worried because in recent seasons, we've all seen this new appointment. The coaches come and they try their philosophy. It doesn't work. The coach gets shifted away, but the players stay on. I mean, Roy Keane said it just the other day that these are the players who got Mourinho fired. Then they got Ole fired now. Just waiting to see if they're going to get Ten Hag fired as well because player power seems to be ruling at Man United at the moment. That The players are not getting any blame. All the blame just gets attached to the coach and you're gone. So... I'm hoping that to Ten Hag, maybe he'll be given the freedom to bring his own players and shift the players who are not doing the job because, come on. This Paul Pogba has been at Man United, what has he done? And these, those are the type of players who came in with big money, the Pogba's, your Maguire's, but the performances have not been warranted and they do not match the amount of money that they were bought for. So. They need to do away with that culture and bring in players who want to play for the team and who want to represent the United badge, not players who just want to be about themselves. Yeah. Okay. What do you guys think in terms yeah. of this news now coming in for Man United? Does it do anything to lift their morale? Does it give them a boost? Nene, what would you think? Uh, moving forward into the running, last seven, eight games of the season, does this new coaching appointment give you a boost 
for the top four uh, hopes? Um, I don't know. Okay, a part of me says yes, um, because I mean he's coming in; it's a new coach, and the only way he's going to attract new players is if they're in the Champions League. Um, otherwise, he's going to have issues uh, attracting uh, key players if they're not in the Champions League. On the flip side, I'm, I'm sure when, when his condition of appointment was that there's probably like eight to ten players that would have to go um, in, in the summer. So if those players already know that they're going to be on the transfer list, some of them, they've got nothing to play for, um, except maybe trying to get interest from other clubs. But in terms of for Man United, between now and the end of the season, um, they don't really care um, because they're not going to be here. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's twofold. So, for for the team itself, um, for the players, because, I mean, as you mentioned, Maguire, um, those guys, if they're going to be on their way out, they should at least perform so that some team comes at the end of the season and takes Maguire or, you know, um, or Pogba. Uh, but if they play shit until now, until the end of the season, and United doesn't get into the top four, and they're going to be like Arsenal, bro. You know, no one wants <laughs> Arsenal players. So they're going to be in the same thing. So it's up to them what they do. They can play well and hopefully get attraction um, from uh, other teams like a Jesse Lingard and whatnot. And if they play shit, they're going to be sitting on the transfer list the whole summer. And then they're going to be exiled. And yeah, Arsenal, we all know about this stuff, bro. So United <laughs> did want to find themselves in the same situation. <laughs> okay. Well, talking about the Arsenal situation, uh, or not even the Arsenal situation, the Man United situation, when it comes to the fight for the top four. So when you're looking at the log and you're looking for as how the log currently stands, obviously we've got Manchester City and Liverpool running away with it at the front. Uh, City on 77 points, Liverpool on 76. But now we're looking at now the fight for the Champions League spots uh, from position three, four, all the way down to seven with West Ham. So, and I'm counting Chelsea in there because now with Arsenal beating Chelsea this this week, it actually brings everybody closer to Chelsea now, where you before it used to just be the top three and then everyone else fighting for fourth. But let's see, Chelsea is sitting on 62 points. Spurs sitting in fourth on 57 points, tied with Arsenal, who are also on 57 points, and only behind Spurs on goal difference. And then Manchester United, as we've spoken about them, are sitting in sixth with 54 points, and then West Ham with 52 points. DJ, what would you think? In your last seven games of the season, now sitting in sixth spot in the Premier, in the Premier League, and you are sitting three points behind Spurs, with a game in hand. Actually, Man United has played 33, 33 games, with Spurs having played 32 games. So, uh, just about five five games left for Man, Man United and two points behind Spurs, or three points behind Spurs for that fourth spot. What, what are your hopes? What are the chances? What do you think can happen in the last coming games? Well, this is Man United. It could go up or it could go down. I mean, the next game is against Arsenal. Yeah. And you don't know which Man United is going to turn up. Frankly, I had written off Man United long ago from the top four, but Spurs and Arsenal also do not cement their sports and they allowed Man United to claw their way back to within three points of both of them. So the next five games, uh, it could go either way, but it's not in Man United's hands. It's how the teams at the top perform and also whether they're still swimming around there or they just keep dropping more points because Spurs and Arsenal are three points ahead and have game in hand and United are fifth. So it could go either way really, but I'm not holding my breath because United are too inconsistent to actually bet your house on them, so <laughs> I'm not going to take that risk. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, don't bet your house, bet someone else's house on them. <laughs> uh, 
So here's here's yeah, that house will go. So <laughs> don't put your money on them. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> so here's the Man United's running the next games. Saturday, twenty third April, Arsenal versus Man United. Arsenal home game. Then United's got Chelsea. So United has had four all the big four rivals playing against each other all at the same time. Starting with Liverpool, then Arsenal, then Chelsea. So that's a tough run-in. And then they play Brentford on the 2nd of May um, at home. And then it's Brighton. And we all know Brighton. Brentford and Brighton have caused issues. They beat Arsenal at the beginning of the season. They drew with Liverpool 3-3. They beat Chelsea. Uh, was it Chelsea they beat? Am I right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. They beat yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, uh, one. Yeah. There you go. So United's running has been very difficult. Already losing to Liverpool, and then got Arsenal now who've got their tails up. And then Brighton again. Brighton, uh, Brighton beat Arsenal. Brighton drew with Liverpool earlier in the season. They're not uh, they're not someone to be sniffed at. And then Crystal Palace. Nene, what would you say if you looked at that they schedule? They beat Spurs. They beat Spurs. Brighton beat Spurs. So, yeah. Nene, what would you say if you look yeah. at those fixtures? What would you say looking at that in terms of United's chances of finishing fourth or third? Um, I think. Okay, um, <laughs> okay so at third position, um, I don't think Chelsea is going to slip. Um, I don't, I, don't, I don't foresee it coming. Um, so we can just look at what I think Chelsea is competing on their own. So we can look at what six and seven. Yeah. Um, to be honest, it doesn't look like anyone wants that position. Um, it's the same thing that happened last season when uh, when Liverpool ended up sneaking in and, and Spurs fell and left the choke and whatnot. Yeah. So this season it doesn't look like anyone um, wants it, and if if Arsenal lose um, to United, um, they go to fifty-seven. So all three teams are fifty-seven, and if Brentford uh, beats Spurs, then you know we all uh, stuck on fifty-seven. Then it's a it's a different conversation altogether. Yeah. Um, so for now, I think United they do have a chance, provided they can win maybe. Three, three to four games in a row, uh, because we know the other uh, Arsenal is going to slip up and Spurs going to slip up. So if United can maybe get three, three straight victories, nine points, I think that will get them into the the top four, irrespective that they played one game more. So they have a chance. We we always choke, and 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 you and Spurs also the, the history we, we always choke. So United seems to be the one, you know, that could sneak in there. And yeah. But where are those they three victories to gonna come from? Where are those three victories gonna come from? They're playing Brighton, okay, Chelsea, Arsenal, Brentford, Brighton, Palace. That's their last game. Okay, first of all, firstly I think they can beat Arsenal because for some strange reason, United can be so shit and they always win against us. 1-0, 2-1, whatever. But they always beat us. Even the first leg, they beat us. I think it was 1-0. Um, they shouldn't have beaten us in that game, but they did. So if they can beat Arsenal, um, it, it puts them right in. And if it's Man United going up against Spurs, um, then definitely they're going to be in it for the top four. So the primary, the first victory out of the three, they have to beat Arsenal. If they don't beat Arsenal, it means Arsenal goes to 60 and they stay on 54. So they're six points behind. Then they're completely um, out. So they have to win the Saturday. Okay, all right. So let's shift gears then. Move up the table now from Man United to now your precious Arsenal, Nene. After this win now over Chelsea and uh, morale that gives you guys, because I mean, you guys were running on a bad, bad run of form lately, losing to Brighton, Crystal Palace, and who's the third one? Southampton. So, and those were all games you actually should have won. 
So you could probably be sitting in fourth spot right now. How does Arsenal feel at the moment, even though with the big win over Chelsea? Um, I don't know that you know that win over Chelsea means nothing if we don't beat United. Um, because we're gonna be back, you know, to where we were. Um, those three games, um, I don't think anyone thought we were gonna lose those matches because had we won those games, um, it wouldn't even matter what happens with, with the Chelsea match. It wouldn't. It wouldn't matter what happens with the United match. Um, and every time when we're under pressure to perform, we don't perform. Um, yesterday, um, we were nowhere in terms of any hope for top four. It was just a mathematical chance. So all of a sudden, we've won and we're like, oh shit, we're back in the race. But that's how it's always been, you know, the whole time. It's always like we've just woken up and you're like, oh, but we what position. You know, it means we can do this. And then, and then we just collapse. So now we've got the belief again um, that we can do it. But if we lose against United and we, we go level on points, then it's over. Because it means it's going to be pressure all the way to the end of the season and we're not that good. So to help us, because we know we're going to slip up, we've got the London Derby coming up, we have to beat United. So this game against United is a must win for both teams for top four. Yeah. Yeah, definitely is a must win. So DJ, I want to pose the opposite yeah. question now to you, the same that I posed to him previously about Man United. So when we're looking at um, Arsenal's remaining fixtures, so DJ, this question will come to you. Arsenal's got Man United, West Ham away, for London Derby, as hmm. Manny was talking about, and then Leeds United at home, and then the big one, Spurs away, and then the final, oh, two games left, and then after that, it's Newcastle away, and then Everton, last game of the season. So that's Arsenal's running, and hmm. that is everyone with something to play for in that running. You've got either, you're either playing someone fighting for Champions League, with West Ham and United or they got play uh, and Spurs and then they're also looking at playing Leeds United, Newcastle and Everton all in the relegation zone. So Arsenal's literally got cup finals from here until the end of the season. What are their chances yeah. of finishing in the, four, in the top four with that running? Mm, I would have said it's in the bag but this is Arsenal. Prior to those three defeats before the Chelsea game I did think that I didn't think that they win all, but I didn't see them losing all three. Mm. I actually expected them to lose the Chelsea game and get something from the previous three. So, with Arsenal, you can't say what today they can be hot and beat the team at the top and then play a team that's mid table or fight for relegation and lose that game. So, Arsenal does have it in their hands, their destiny in their hands because. They beat United, automatically eliminating an opponent or uh, opponents for top four. He beat Spurs. That's another opponent for top four. He beat West Ham. So it's in their hands, really. Mm. Uh, the relegation threaten teams, eh? <laughs> it's never easy. As you said, these are like cup finals from here on in. And the team that finds consistency to the end is the team that's go grab and cement the top four spot. So yeah. Arsenal really needs to get their acts together. Because we don't know which Arsenal is going to turn up. We're going to see the Arsenal that lost three games in a row. We're going to see the Arsenal that went to Stamford Bridge and beat Chelsea at their own ground. So, I for one I for one prefer to see time for Arsenal to show their character. Chelsea. Yeah. So let's yeah. see predictions. It's time if, for Arsenal to show some character. So if you say, if we, if I asked both of you, the Man United Arsenal game, who wins it? With top four implications. Arsenal wins. United. Arsenal. <laughs> United wins. Arsenal wins. United wins. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Arsenal playing at home Saturday, 23rd of April. 
1.30 p.m. South African time. We are going to enjoy that one. I am definitely watching that game for sure. And then we go to the last team in the top four play in the top four fight, Tottenham Hotspur, um, a team that was also on form around the same time with uh, Arsenal. And then they go on to lose against Brighton. That Nobody saw that one coming off. They're coming to the Brighton game on a hot streak, scoring a lot of goals. Son Heung-min and Harry Kane, um, both on both on form and just the team in general is just feeling very confident. But now they have the advantage in terms of being in the fourth spot with 57 points and a game in hand on United, I should say. Um, but not on Arsenal. But let's see. Spurs' uh, last couple games, they play Brentford, Leicester, Liverpool, Arsenal, Burnley, and Norwich. What are their chances there? In terms of if you want to compare, compared to Arsenal's running, compared to United's running, where does Spurs uh, run in 60? Right? I'd say they have a much easier, but this is the Premier League. It's not run in or not, but they, they should be comfortable based on the fixtures that they have, but this is the Premier League and we saw last just last weekend the uh, Spurs lost to Brighton at home. No one saw them coming. I mean Spurs were riding high, Kane and so on were just tearing defenses apart, but then they lost to Brighton at home. And yeah. Makes you wonder how which which Spurs as well is gonna be turning up in the coming games because consistency seems to elude them, but Conte is an experienced coach, so I think he would try to get into his players' heads that, look, there's no time to relax and no time to give away points right now. Arsenal is right on their back and one slip up, top four is gone. Yeah. Nene, your, your predictions for how Spurs are going to finish the season? Remembering that in the last two, three seasons, it's been the same thing. Top four contention all the way through the season. Right at the end, they start choking and they fall off and then they end up in the uh, uh, Europa League places. What does Spurs running look like? Given the fact that they play Liverpool in their final games, Leicester, Arsenal as well, as well as two relegation candidates with Burnley and Norwich. Um, the only thing I can say with Spurs is that they know how to score goals. Um, and going into the the last few games of the season, um, goals are going to be very important. Um, and they've got Son and Kane, um, which if you look at all the teams that are going into the, that are chasing the top four, um, Spurs, Arsenal, Man United, West Ham. Um, in terms of attacking threats, um, Spurs beat everyone by far. Um, no one comes close. So, on the basis of the firepower, um, they should walk into the top four. Uh, but as DJ said, this is the Premier League. Um, anything can happen. But on paper, um, Spurs should, you know, get top four. You know. I mean, you know, they're not they're not shy of goals. Um and and the games that you've mentioned against Liverpool, Liverpool is gonna score. Um and they've got players that can also score. Um and that's that's the advantage they've got. Even when we're gonna play them in the London Derby, um they are gonna score. We just not sure if we're gonna score. So out of all the games, um I think Spurs has a chance of um of, of securing the, that spot. So, I hate okay. to say it, but yeah, they, 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 they got firepower and oh, wow. the rest of us don't. Okay. So, that's a bit of a revelation there. The Arsenal man is picking Spurs to get the top four. DJ, what are you thinking about who's going to get that fourth spot? Yeah, Spurs as well. In their yes, hands. on yes. paper, as Nene yeah. said, they have okay. they have the better run in compared to the three chasing teams, and 
they had to, they at number four, so it's up to okay. them to cement that place. Otherwise, Arsenal might just sneak in and take it away. They're taking candy from a baby. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go against the grain here. I'm going to disagree with both of you, and I'm going to go with the fact that uh, the established powers in the Premier League always end up getting that fourth spot. So I'm going to go with Arsenal making a return to the Champions League next season and grabbing fourth spot on the last day of the season. Um, Man United will finish fifth and Spurs will end up sixth. <laughs> I knew you'd like that. <laughs> Spurs will finish sixth, guys. I'm you, telling you. You know, you know why. So I'm it's, giving, it's another I'm slip up for Spurs. Spurs. Yeah. Yeah, another yeah. Spurs. The thing was, yeah. Spurs has Philip. Antonio Conte. Yeah, okay. Yes. Spurs has Antonio Conte. And and I'm sure um, if he doesn't get top four, I don't think he's going to stay. Um, so I think there's a lot riding on them to get top four, keeping Harry Kane um, and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah um, United... Yeah, it's fine. They're going to finish fifth. But I think, as you said, between Arsenal um, and, and, and Spurs, because remember, our target again for this season was, was to get into top six yeah, um, and get back into the Europa League. Uh, because I don't know if our team is strong enough for Champions League as yet. You know, we don't want to go into the Champions League and get beat 6 no and get knocked out in the group stages. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm at, man. But thank yeah. you for the confidence. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have a fun running into the end of the Premier League season. Football fans, that's been a fantastic installment of Football Extreme, the band coming back together, our top four conversation. So thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content, subscribe to our channel, like our videos, and always post your comments. We love reading them. So it's been great. Gentlemen, say goodbye to the fans. And fans, look out for our other videos coming out soon. We've got our Champions League video coming out. And we've got our video on the relegation zone in the Premier League. Gentlemen, say goodbye to the fans. Yeah. Cheers, Peace out, yo. Catch you next yeah. time. Definitely.